You're listening to the Teach Better Talk podcast featuring expert educators eager to share progressive tactics to reach more students. Teach Better Talk is created by teachers and fueled by passion. Let's get started. Welcome to episode 80 of Teach Better Talk. I'm Ray Hewart, and as always, I'm with the gorgeous Jeff Gargas. Gorgeous? Where did that come from? Well, it came from our uh, our guest today on the podcast. I don't know why he thinks you're gorgeous, because it's just frankly not true. No. But it's sweet that he was trying to compliment you before we interview him on the podcast. It was. And uh, it's also sweet that this is another unique episode of our podcast because we're live again today. We are live. We're live. This is the second time we've done live. Uh, episode 79 was live, actually. Mm-hmm. And now episode 80 live as well. We're live today from the uh, Summer Spark Conference at USM. So hashtag USM Spark. Uh, and we are chatting with Mike Muhammad. Am I saying that correctly? Yes, I that didn't is ask. Correct. I usually check before, but uh-huh. now that we're live, I don't get to check. So that's awesome. I said it right. And you're speaking here today. You actually just spoke prior to this, right? Yes. Well, you were. We just did a session where you were in a session with Ray and uh-huh. I. But prior to that, you just did what was your session? Uh, Paradeck. A Paradeck. Okay, right. gotcha. And that's something that you use quite a bit. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right, now, are you affiliated or just a big fan? Uh, certified coach. Okay. Awesome. But that seems very official. Yeah. What does that mean? Like, what have you done to be certified coach? Like, uh, it's the, there's a training that we go through. Okay. We create decks and basically it's like an online, a short online quiz and stuff like that. It's gotcha. an intensive training. Yes. There was a f- physical fitness test. There was actual all... machine gun. Yes, fire. absolutely. Yeah. There yeah, was. was. So... Pear picking in the orchard. Yes. <laughs> pear so, picking for pear. So Normally on Teach Better Talk, we, we would actually be doing our intro after the episodes. So we talk about it. So this is like a little more like we're not going to prepare them at all. But Do you also, feel rebellious right now? But I, well, yeah, very much rebellious. But I also don't have my, my notes to do like a, you know, to tell them about you. So we're going to have you kind of do that first. Well, you just want to take that. That's usually your question, isn't it? I do because usually, usually they come and we say hi and then you're like mm-hmm. oh and then when you talk and so for our listeners they up. know that you don't actually know how to how to do a podcast That's so I, true. I'll be teaching you this is a good mentoring okay, opportunity great, great. teach the awesome. teachable moment Love it. Uh, the first question I usually ask which I will be asking today is for you to tell us a little bit about yourself because not only do we want to make sure our listeners know but we want to really get that full picture of your background so as you go through sharing everything else you'll be sharing this episode um, we kind of know where you're coming from so would you mind sharing a little about yourself. Um, if I said I do mine, then I guess that'd be a bad episode. Yes, I guess that would be, <laughs> be the worst guest ever. Aww, that's, this is episode eighty. You can't be a bad yeah, guest at this point. True. All right, so uh, I'm Mike Muhammad again, and I've been a classroom science teacher for nineteen years now at the middle and high school level. Uh, I've taught um, biology, chemistry, and currently I'm only teaching physics right now, but at the AP level as well. And um, I really enjoy it. So I. I think that's about me in a nutshell. That's, that's awesome. So 19 nutshell. years, yep. both middle school and high school, mm-hmm. a couple different uh, type uh, content areas and yes. stuff. So, so that leads me and that leads perfectly into the, the first question. So that's that's a lot of experience, a lot of different areas, a lot of opportunity for challenges, struggles, and you know failures. We talk a lot about that on on the podcast. So can you take us to a time that you've had a struggle or a failure in your career? Sort of tell us what happened, how that make you feel, and then what did you do to overcome that, and what did you take away from that experience? Yeah, you know, I think the biggest failure now, I guess what I'm going to say isn't the failure. The failure is embedded in there, but my first year as a full-time teacher, um, we had a mentorship program with new teachers and uh, a mentor, and, you know, over the course of the year, I was really an isolated person uh, closing my classroom door, trying some of these new methods that I had just learned in college, and... So the rest of this school, it really didn't look like I was teaching like everyone else. So um, I was actually put on, not necessarily probation, but on watch that first year. And basically they said, okay, we need to have you have a more intense mentor. You're not teaching like everyone else. So realizing that first year, my real, so I would say that's not the failure. The failure was really communicating, opening my doors and being a little bit more vulnerable about how I teach and ask for help when I need it. And just communicate what I'm doing outside of just my classroom if I'm doing something different. That's awesome. I, I think that's that. really important. Yeah, I, I totally empathize with that. My first few years teaching, I, I really was that teacher that closed my door. And 
And there is this concern of, are you closing your door because you're doing something that isn't effective? Or are you closing your door because you're doing something innovative and you don't want to share? And I think a lot of educators, especially those dabbling with new ideas, find themselves closing their door. But I love your your spin at the end of, you really need to open your door and mm -hmm. share. And, and however you, people perceive that is then a, a separate issue, separate thing that you can approach and problem solve through. But, but sharing with everybody, whether it be in your building or on social media, sharing what you're doing is so important. I think a lot of teachers actually, uh, another reason why they close the door is because they're worried about how they're gonna be judged by their peers, by their, by their admins. They, they think maybe if they decide in their chat, Actually, very early on with Teach Better and on the blog, he wrote a post about teaching in a fishbowl. Now, because he did, he went to the Woodrow Wilson Fe Teaching Fellowship, mm -hmm. so he had to be, uh, he was observed like constantly. So he loved the fact that he had this sort of like always open, always mm -hmm. coming and check it out. And like, so it's awesome when we see teachers doing that open the door saying, come, come mm -hmm. check me out. Come. We actually have an, uh, a hashtag observe me, observe me poster. poster kit, which is like, put on your door, let them come in so you can learn and grow and stuff. So that's awesome. I love it. So now let's, let's flip it. Let's talk about a successful moment. This can be something big, something small, it doesn't matter, but take us there. Like what happened? Why was it a successful moment for you? And then what did you take away from that experience? Yeah, you know, I think the biggest thing that, that I'm probably most proud of in terms of what we've been able to do in the classroom is uh, a couple of years ago, my key teaching colleague, I co-teach a physics class with a special educator, Andy Espinosa, and we went to uh, PBL World to learn a little bit more about project-based learning. And we implemented in the first year a big unit, long, uh, actually a term-long project, and at the end, we didn't do much with it. It was like, oh, we're going to publish it to YouTube, and now it's the end of that. But the next year, we kind of came around and flipped it and kind of realized, okay, we do need to present this to someone. So we decided uh, to have a Project Expo Night at our school, where basically we would put out the call to parents, to community members, to school board members, stakeholders, and just said, okay, if we're going to present it, we'll see who comes in. What we decided as well, because we were afraid we wouldn't get any audience at all, we split our 100 students in half and said, okay, first half. 50 of presenting, then we'd flip it. So we'd have that built-in audience. But what was amazing to see once we put the blast out to parents to actually see how many parents actually showed up mm -hmm. and how many of them actually appreciated this opportunity. And I think that was a great success. It can communicate more than I ever could at a parent-teacher conference. And yeah. they got to see a little another side of their student that they may not have seen before. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. that's awesome. And I think any way that you can have your students sharing their insight with their community. I mean, mm -hmm. I love... That's all. Yeah, you're all about that. I am all about that. But I love, you know, that, that idea <laughs> that you were, like, working with a... a building in an audience in case no one showed up is literally my life. Like when I do things with the classroom and the community, I'm constantly, you know, creating those kind of like worst case scenario follow-ups. At least they were going to have 50 people in the audience. I mean, we do the same thing. I talk about the Tobin's pizza unit all the time, but you, I was kind of like, well, what if no one comes to the restaurant? Okay. So how can I figure out how to get students in there? And the reality is, is there was always a line out the door because the community wants to be engaged in schools. And they really just don't know how to, like, they don't know how to appropriately be in schools unless they're writing a check or their child goes mm -hmm. there. But there's magic in inviting other people who don't have a direct line to the building to see the magic of your students, the magic of your classroom. Hey, everyone. While we take this quick break, I want to encourage you to log into Facebook and go join our private Teach Better Team group. It is full of a thousand educators who are sharing ideas from the classroom, but really also brainstorming ways to start implementing these new initiatives that we're all working on. So go head over to Facebook and make sure you're a part of this incredible team. Well, I have to say that that gets me really fired up. That's, that is what I love <laughs> about education. Um, but I kind of want to shift that to you outside of that element. What is really like fueling your fire in terms of getting you excited about what's going on in education? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is that that we can allow students to express themselves in different ways. That I think there's kind of like two prongs to that. The idea that we've changed standards to not just be about content. That mm -hmm. standards now have verbs that imply a skill that students are having standards that have to do with doing, not just knowing something. Mm -hmm. And that just gets me super excited. But then on the other end, that when we assess these, we can't just assess, uh, assess with the pencil and paper that we're asking them to go beyond. And these are not just things that can be done in like a 50 minute time test. We're mm -hmm. looking to extend them beyond that. And that opens the door 
to change what summative assessments look like in our classroom. Absolutely. That's been a huge shift we've seen, but I yeah. love the way you phrased that. That was a great answer. That was yeah, a great answer. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have to say, with all of this insight, all these things you've shared, all the pieces that you're still dabbling with in your own classroom and you know, challenging yourself to do new things every year, what type of advice would you give a new teacher? Maybe they're new to the classroom, maybe they're new to a specific area, a new building. What advice do they need to um, really be successful in this progressive movement? I really think sharing not just in your own school, but beyond your own school. Uh, I, I'm just always impressed at throwing stuff out on Twitter or whatever, even if it's just a picture of your classroom. The more open you are to sharing, the more likely you're going to get someone to like a post that you make, and then it's like, oh, what I'm doing matters. Mm -hmm. What I'm doing is seen, and that someone's approving of my work. Instead of that fear of someone's going to walk by my classroom, see it, and disapprove, being ready to hear that approval. Well, and it allows you to control the narrative that, mm -hmm. right? We talk about that a lot with our students having the ownership of controlling their own narrative, but it's the same with teachers. You know, yeah. you can allow someone to walk by your, your room and make assumptions about what's going on and see that students may be on their phone or on their computer and, and pass judgment. Or you can share what you're doing, go on social media and, and write the narrative of they're not on their phones, they're recording a podcast about reflecting and goal setting about their day's learning. I mean, it's completely, you know, your choice to have the ability to share that way. 100%. Couldn't agree more. Control your narrative. I love it. All right, we're going to let you control this narrative right here. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really, I'm doing that more and more. Your transitions are spot <clears throat> on, Jeff Gargas. They're total dad transitions. I think is what we were joking about. Anyway, so we're going to do the next, you, well, you've listened to the podcast. You know what's going on. You're ready for this, right? So we're going to do the next six questions. Your goal is to answer each one in 15 seconds or less. All right. You ready? I'm ready. All right, so give us one ed tech tool you cannot live without. Uh, Pear Deck. Go figure, right? That was yeah. an easy session. answer. Yeah. <laughs> give us another one All right. that uh, you can maybe live without. All right. Uh, Google Slides, I think. Okay. We've found different ways to use Google Slides beyond the presentation for students mm -hmm. to express understanding in a way that isn't just a document. Who were you just talking to? Was it on a podcast episode somewhere else that they talking about Google Slides like instead of Google Docs? Mm -hmm. So who was that? Maybe it wasn't you. I think you know. I think it was me in the chat, maybe or maybe one of my sessions where they're like, utilize they're utilizing Google Slides even for something that could be done in a Google Doc. So like when they're having their kids maybe write or create or share, they're doing it through Google Slides because there's more ways for them to be creative, mm -hmm. like you talked about earlier, more ways to use that other side of the brain and, and brain pictures and stuff like that that allows them to adjust and do things better than like a Google, uh, Google Doc would do. So 100%. I agree right. with that. That's awesome. All right, so then uh, give us a book that you're reading right now or listen to if yeah. you're out of there. Just finished um, Don't Ditch That Tech by hmm. Matt Miller. The yes. new yeah. one that just came out like last yeah. week. It Fantastic. was brand new. Yes, brand new. Fantastic. You know, just thinking about, and what, what I love about the book, it's talking about differentiation, but it's differentiated for teachers at different levels of tech integration. Okay. And it's really fantastic. And it doesn't judge us for teaching in one style. It lets us realize that, oh, we're all in different ends of the continuum, and you may have to shift uh, from lesson to lesson. Gotcha. Okay, so you were a Twitter guy or an Instagram? Uh, Twitter guy. Okay, so give us uh, up to three people. I'm going to limit you at that, okay. that we need to follow right now on Twitter. Well, I'd actually say there's, uh, thinking about this question, I was like, okay, uh, there's a lot of people I can name that have actually already been guests, so people are already following, but I would actually say um, my school Twitter account is really great. In fear of sounding like Joe Sanfilippo, go critics, go crickets. <laughs> um, our school account, our principal, Brett Gritzmacher, does a great job of maintaining it, sharing out, and in terms of being vulnerable, I think subscribing to the Brookfield Central High School account. Now, I would actually love to subscribe to more schools to see what they're doing and mm -hmm. get ideas, but we've got some great stuff going on. So um, SDE underscore BCHS. Awesome. I love it. Uh, give us the best either YouTube channel or website for educators. Um, I would say America's Test Kitchen. Uh, for a scientist who's interested in design thinking and looking at how we run experiments, it's a mm -hmm. great place not just to find recipes, but for them to talk about a process of investigation. So, that, is that YouTube? Yeah, that, YouTube okay, channel. Awesome. Yep. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And uh, give us a daily, weekly, or monthly routine that you think every educator should get into. I think reflecting, finding some way to reflect, whether that be recording yourself, typing mm -hmm. something up, I think on a weekly basis before you pack up and leave for the week or before you start your week, do a daily reflect, a weekly reflection. If you were just in our podcasting session here at Summer Spark, you would see me do it to reflect. 
I yeah. love it. So. Record a podcast. <laughs> uh, all right. Finally, give us the best piece of advice you've ever received. Um, Jim Rickaba, who is uh, used to be head of the Institute for Personalized Learning, just one of the things he says that always sticks with me is, if you're clear on the why and the what, the how will figure itself out. Mm, that's great. Oh. Yeah, that's great. Clear yeah. on the wait. Say that one more time. That's so good. If you have clearly defined the why and the what, the how will figure itself out. That's a great quote. Yeah, that I love one's it. good. That's awesome. You should make a bumper sticker with that. Quote. We've been doing a lot. We talked about bumper stickers and making stickers with Kim Darche. In I know. Last, in one of the last episodes. I'm sorry. So I just feel like we're we get the bumper sticker business. Share the <laughs> world with inspirational <laughs> daily quotes. That's we important. might want to. We might need to do that. We could totally do. Teach better talk bumper stickers or just stickers in general that With are the best quotes. quotes pulled from all the different episodes. That is oh, okay. Mike, you just it, led us to a whole new done. business model here. If you're listening right now and you have a bumper sticker connection, please reach out to Jeff Gargas. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Hashtag teach better bumper sticker. Yeah, That's there we go. Hashtag. That's a long that hashtag. <laughs> That's all right. All right. I have the most important question. I don't care if I say that every time. It really is because the podcast should be just a beginning for teachers to connect with other amazing educators, and we definitely want them to connect with you. So how can our listeners connect with you? Um, I think great way, the best way is probably on Twitter, uh, at Mo Physics, at M-O underscore physics, and I have a blog that... You know, I, I keep updating at least one or two posts per month. Um, Mo physics, Mo problems dot blogspot dot com. That's your, I love that's your that. blog. I yeah. love that. Coolest handle. That is the best <laughs> ever. So I don't even want to. I don't know if I even want to ask you this question. I'm going to ask it anyway. So can we get you on record, on air, to the world, agreeing to come do some guest? Post with on teachbetter.com? Sure. Yes. I have. See, he couldn't say no. He couldn't <laughs> say no. We're recording. Afterwards, be like, I really don't want to do that. <laughs> or I almost be, don't want to because it's, but now, but now we'll be able to link to that yes, website. Yes. So that's awesome. Or it'd be like edited out all of a sudden in mm -hmm. a different voice. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> that sounds a lot like Chad. <laughs> <laughs> or Jeff, Jeff does, doing a really bad mic impression. Jeff does all the editing, so you know he was going to make you say yes regardless. I'll find someone. It'll be like Will Ferrell or someone like just <laughs> completely <laughs> random. I'm get, so anyway, so so you know, listening, you can find. Everything we talked about and, and everything over at teachbetter.com in the show notes, including the links to connect with Mike and his awesome blog. What's the blog again? Um, Mo, Mo Physics, Physics Mo Problems. Yes. Oh right, so we'll God. get that all uh, up there for you. So make sure you head over to teachbetter.com for all of that. And please uh, make sure you give us a, a, a subscribe. Hit that subscribe button if I can learn how to talk so you don't miss any other upcoming, upcoming episodes. Hit a rating or review. We'd really appreciate that. We're really trying to push that out because it helps us get seen by more people. And then I really have been pushing this. I really want you to continue doing this. Think of just three of your colleagues, your friends, or your family members that need to hear these amazing stories and share this podcast with them so we can continue to raise up these amazing voices and share these stories. So, Mike, man, we really appreciate you jumping on. I think it was just yesterday. I was like, hey, you want to do this tomorrow when we see each other? Because it's the first time we're, we're meeting in real life, which is awesome. Uh, and jumping on here, we're just live. We just finished the session. We're all waiting. we got to run off to lunch right now. So you're amazing. We really appreciate that. Just a big thanks from us. No, oh, thank you. I love the podcast. Love the work you guys are doing. Awesome. And with that, let's get out there. Let's teach better. Let's go eat. Let's go eat. <laughs>